Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning, Lala. On Wealth Wednesday, we want to make it happen with Lappin. We're here with <laughs> yeah. Nicole Lappin's in the house. She's a New York Times bestseller. She has a new book, Becoming Superwoman. Yeah. I'm already super. We're already right? super. Yeah, you are. remember that we're super, right? And no, Superman. I love yes. I love oh, I love that. I appreciate that. Right? And apparently, you don't need to be Superwoman because you are at the airport all the time. You fly. That's true. A lot That's right. Yeah. It's yeah. the wind beneath my cave. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nicole, how did you become the first woman ever to be named money expert? of the year. I don't know. Maybe it was a fluke. I kind of snuck in there. You know, I'm the least likely person to become a money expert. I grew up in an immigrant family, first generation American, never had the Wall Street Journal on the kitchen counter, never talked about stocks or bonds. Like maybe I knew Bond Girl, uh, but I just needed a job really early on. And I started out in news. Um, mm -hmm. I worked in small markets, as you do in news, before I got up to CNN and CNBC and all of those fun networks. But I was offered a job on the floor of the Chicago Merck um, instead of my wedding. What I thought was my dream job at a Milwaukee CBS station, yeah. which, uh, you know, my life had other plans for me. Mm -hmm. And they asked me if I knew anything about business news. And I said, absolutely. I love business news. <laughs> and I totally <laughs> lied. I right made it until I made it because <laughs> yeah. I needed a J-O-B. Yeah. And then I figured out how to just love what I did and love the opportunities that I had. I didn't have the luxury to do what I love, as a lot mm -hmm. of entrepreneurial experts will tell you to do. So I just realized that money is a language like anything else. We just don't have a Rosetta Stone for it growing up. We learn a lot of ridiculous things in school, like how to do geometry and how to dissect a frog. I don't know why we need to know that in this yes. world, but how to mm -hmm. do our budget and do a t taxes and a business plan. I think that would be way more valuable. Just saying. Just know? saying. Yep. But yeah, my boyfriend in high school said he wanted to be a hedge fund manager. I thought he wanted to be in gardening. So girl, I, I don't know what to answer your question. I don't know. I'm the least likely person to do it. If I it's could do it, though, anyone PR. can. It's good media and PR. But when was the moment you realized for yourself that you would innately become one? You were speaking that language and fluently, mind you. Yeah, so not only was I speaking it but I was speaking it to the world casually. And then fast forward about a decade later, I never expected I would be teaching other people mm -hmm. how to speak the language of money as well. But yeah, so it's not complicated once you figure it out. Right? It's so like if you went to China and you didn't speak Chinese, you'd be very <laughs> yeah. It would happen. So let's talk about your book, Becoming Superwoman. What does that look like? So Superwoman, not the character, the one word version, mm -hmm. but the space is super important uh, because the space allows for you to put your oxygen mask on first before helping others. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought I needed to be Superwoman and be all things to all people. So ultimately I was nothing to myself. And yeah. I think therein lies the real danger. And so after a breakdown, mental, emotional, and physical breakdown that stemmed from a severe burnout after the launch of my second book, Boss mm -hmm. Bitch, um, I had to rethink everything. And I realized that actually self-care is the biggest asset or liability in your career. So when it's off, it can bring you to rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And when it's on point, it can actually bring you more success than you ever imagined. Totally. You know? so true. I, I love you saying that. I think a lot of women and men struggle because they think of self-care as like more to-do items on their already lengthy to-do list. How do you make it simple and easy to weave the self-care in so it doesn't feel like additional work and feels like actually mm -hmm. relief? So I did a social experiment with a bunch of women and I asked them to list the top five things they value. Uh, they listed awesome things like my job, my house, my husband, my dog, whatever. Um, <laughs> none of them wrote myself on the list. I mean, if you guys think about it, like what would you list as the top five mm -hmm. things you value, the top 10 things you value, would you even be on that list? And so I think it was really that mind shift to put a ring on it. By the way, I put like my own ring on my right, right. hand. Love that. Thank oh. you. Yes. Even if I have one on this hand, you know, the most important relationship is the one you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that. I self-prescribed work for a long time and I thought I would be happy or I would be balanced when I got there, a certain job or a certain salary. And then I got there and almost immediately I changed the goalpost on myself. Mm -hmm. And there was always another there there, right? So I never got my always friends another. on the other side. That's right. I love that. Right? It's, I love that. I mean, I, I think it's so important and I, I agree. Like when I'm burned out, my creativity is the highest thing that I value because I consider that my authentic Self. And it's like if I don't, if I'm burnt out, the creativity just goes, Phew. I'm like, oh, the life force is down. <laughs> Self care goes up and your creativity yeah. goes out the roof. Yeah, you can be of yeah. service to anyone else if you're work. crashing and burning yourself. It's crazy. And there's no external solution to an internal problem. Mm -hmm. And for years, I thought there was. Uh, but it will kick your butt. I had a lot of childhood trauma growing up. I didn't even know that was a thing um, until I came across a PTSD diagnosis. And I didn't even know that was a thing that people who didn't go to war could have. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I figured out the problem, I could actually address it and it took away some of its power against me. So yeah, all of my books are 12-step plans. And the first step is 
Self-care. Admitting you have a problem. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. That's step yeah. one through 12 as well. I but think yeah. I would have failed that, that, that test, but I appreciate the <laughs> passing on the technicality. You got it. <laughs> Fantastic. So when would you say you're the happiest? I mean, you're an author and you obviously work a lot, but you're also focused on self-care. Is there a particular moment when you're happiest? Is it when you're at work? Is it when you're home? Is it somewhere between? You know, I think balance and happiness looks different for everybody at different times. So I don't wish that I had a so-called more balanced life in my mm -hmm. 20s um, when I worked, you know, 18 hours a day because I wouldn't have this platform that I have right now. And so I don't look back wishing that I didn't have PTSD. Mm -hmm. I just look at it now and reframe my biggest problems or what I thought they were as my biggest superpowers because they made me who I am. Mm -hmm. So I think my happiest moments now are when I'm writing or when I'm talking to women, I'm so amazed. Like the events that we've been on for this book, like women are crying. It's a whole thing. It's awesome to see folks IRL because we're so URL all the time. You know? <laughs> get a little so more what do you around. really want to remember, remember for on your, you know, on your deathbed when it's all said and done, what is the number one thing that you really want to remember? It's for? actually interesting because I talk about that in the book as one of the tips uh, to write out your eulogy, to mm -hmm. think about where your purpose is. And yeah. when people don't, you know, think about their purpose, Purpose, money without meaning is just paper mm -hmm. and so it's something that can keep you motivated and so when you start writing and you start crying I always say ding 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 that's <laughs> the purpose that's really where it is so like if you write I want to be you know remembered as the congresswoman who fought for women's rights like are you running like what rights are you talking about mm -hmm. so for me I would love to be remembered as someone who helped women with financial literacy getting mm -hmm. their financial and business lives together and so important taking care of themselves I don't think first. we can have spiritual freedom without financial freedom. Amen. Yeah. Sister. Well, All thank right, you for helping job. me break those thank chains, Nicole. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow you. Uh, at Nicole Lappin, wherever social media is sold <laughs> um, and wherever books are sold. Becoming You're Super such Woman. a boss, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, La Land.